Hello, all. So, age. What a beautiful number. It represents a years of experience. It represents an age of coming. And this may be obvious, but it also represents that you survived your worst years yet. Most of you passed school. Some of you are still in it. And you all know this feeling. You probably hated it. You wanted to drop out at some point. But you didn't. You're here. And so you, just, you survived your worst year yet. But how can age... Wait. With age comes many things. For example, some people can't wait until they're 16 for when they can start driving. And some can't wait until they're 18 when they can start voting. But how can such a wonderful term create such a big divide in humanity? Well, whenever we see somebody who is younger than us, we adopt a sense of superiority. That sense of superiority is uh, fine as we should know more than the average eight-year-old if we are able to drive. With that sense of superiority, however, we may shut down whatever the other person is speaking about. For example, in last month, last year in December, there was a climate change activist speaking in uh, the New Zealand House of Representatives. Unfortunately, one of the uh, her male co-workers, older than her, was trying to speak over her. She then used the contemporary term, OK Boomer, to shut him up. And so here's that, uh, here's that clip. This is Speaker. We are in a climate crisis. If we don't get this right, nothing else matters. In the year 2050, I will be 56 years old. Yet, right now, the average age of this 52nd parliament is 49 years old. Okay, good man. Our current political institutions have proven themselves incompetent That's in thinking outside. <laughs> So as you can see, uh, when she was mentioning age, she uh, had some retorts from off-screen viewers, which she then said, OK, Boomer. So then, how can we stop this age of strife? How can we stop looking down upon one another? Well, let's talk about it. Because we all grow up hating it, but we find ourselves doing it one way or another. With age comes experience. This is where the practice of elders came in. This is why we learn to listen to people older than us, because they've been through more, they've learned more. However, with the experience that the elders use to shape the world around them, the youth have the right to complain about the world given to them. For example, if a farmer were to give you produce, unfortunately, the produce went bad. You have the right to complain to the farmer. However, the farmer having more agricultural experience than you, you probably don't know how to pick the strawberry the right way. But you do have the right to complain as you now have an upset stomach from that rotten banana. The same applies to the world. With the young, they don't build a world of their own. They build one from what is given to them by people around them and older than them. So therefore, they have the right to complain. With this, they end, up, um, they end up talking about the issues they face and so forth. However, the youth cannot disrespectfully complain when talking about a minor inconvenience. Both sides should listen to what each other have to say before having to um, resort to more aggressive communication. But how can we avoid this aggressive communication? How can we avoid interrupting each other, yelling at each other, or just outright insulting each other? Well, we speak in turns. Speaking in turns allows each side to present their argument or their issue without the fear of interrupt uh, interruptment. 
Each side knows that they have the chance to speak, therefore are less inclined to interrupt each other. To help put this to an example, I have prepared a example. To help prepare this, I provided an example between a father and a son about an issue that they want to talk about. Hey, Dad, I have an issue I want to talk about. Yes, son, what is it? Oh. Well, I feel that you and Mom don't respect my feelings towards blank, and it kind of upsets me. Well, son, we understand your feelings, but also we feel this way towards blank for a reason. But we know where you're coming from, and we will, we will decide to respect your opinion on blank. But please try to limit it so that you understand our side of it, too. All right, Dad, thanks. You're the best. Now, of course, that is a uh, rare example of a situation, but notice how on each side, they didn't interrupt each other. They both tried to talk calmly to each other. They both listened. And listening is the most important part of the communication. It shows the other side that you care about what they have to say. If you don't care, they won't listen to you. They won't listen to you. And so you will just be speaking to a wall. Listening provides a multitude of uh, advantages. One, it shows the other side you're listening and therefore makes the other side more inclined to listen to your side. It also can potentially tilt the uh, conversation in your favor as the other side is now more willing to compromise since you're showing interest in what they have to say. With that, you listening to each other's problems, listening to both the young and the old's issues about the world can help us bridge the gap we have created with age and learn, help us learn to coexist with one another. Otherwise, we'll just be stuck in a loop of yelling at each other because my dad doesn't understand me or my son won't talk to me. And so thank you for listening to what I have to say today.